Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. This is part two of our five-part series on Revelation chapter seven, dealing with the sealed people of God. And today we're going to talk about the great multitude, as in the previous study, we dealt with another number, the 144,000. Let's look at what John now sees in this next part of chapter seven. Father, we pray for wisdom and that you would help us to see what you want us to see so we can love you like we are loved. In Jesus' name, amen. The great multitude mentioned here in verse 9 of Revelation 7. This great multitude is not a mixed multitude, but it's a whole lot of people. Why is that important? Well, look in Revelation 7 verse 9. First, John says he hears of a number in the previous part of this vision. But now after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. This is a great multitude that John does not hear, but he sees, he sees this in vision. And it's a great multitude that was so many people that he could not. In fact, no man could number them. But remember, that does not mean that they could not be numbered. The father, Jesus, they knew exactly how many folks are saved. And because counting reveals that they care. Now, it's important to note that when we dealt with the 144,000, this number is distinct from the great multitude, because according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, just to take a quick note, remember what the Bible says when it speaks of Jesus's return, it says, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. When Christ returns, there are those who have accepted Jesus who are resting in their graves. They will be raised up. But then there are those who have accepted Jesus who are alive when he returns. This is the biblical definition of the 144,000. And then those who are rising up, this is this great multitude that John now sees in verse number nine. But when he sees this multitude that's as massive as it is, it is not a mixed multitude spiritually. Now, culturally, oh, all over the world. As far as backgrounds, it says it, all kinds of tongues and languages. But this, this mixture is all made into a singular theme because he says, I see this great number, but they are all clothed with white robes. See, the Bible mentioned a mixed multitude earlier in Exodus chapter 12. This is with the children of Israel as they were actually leaving the, the, the land of Egypt and they were finally free. Look at what happens in Exodus 12 and how they're described. Verse 36 says, the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men, not including the children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them and flocks and herds and even very much cattle. When Israel left, they did not leave alone. There were many Egyptians who left with them. This was the Bible calls them a mixed multitude. But when Revelation talks about this great multitude, while they are of all kindreds, all people, all tongues, all nations, ah, they sing the same song. Verse 10 of Revelation says, cry with a loud voice saying salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb this is what is the collective binding it's the goodness of God that's why they all that's why we all will wear white robes because it shows that this uniform means we all belong to the same group I grew up in, and, and growing up in Adventist Christian schools, they always had uniforms and, and I didn't like it when I was there. But now that I'm a parent with children, I love uniforms because not only is it easier to get up and get dressed in the morning, but what it shows is, is that they belong to a body. They belong to a group. And that is what we've got to understand is what makes us one. Not how we look, not how we talk, not even our opinions unite us. But it is our conviction that unites us in the reception of the grace of God. 
that is what makes many people one. Thanks for watching. If you want to know more about this subject or any other event in prophecy, be sure to visit our prophecy page at changeministry.org slash the highway home. When you get there, you're going to have two choices. One, you can take the interactive chart, which allows you to get an interactive overview of all the events from now, even through the second coming. Or if you want to go deeper, take the step-by-step -step study that allows you to look at each subject, and there you'll find scripture, commentary, and inspiration to encourage us on our journey home to heaven.